We also want to put the spotlight today on a chemical element called manganese. It is essential to steel making pro the steel making process and here to break down this very important commodity and to weigh in on a new report on manganese's economic future is Mark Lackey. He is the executive VP of CHF Investor Relations joining us here in our Toronto studio. Great to have you here it's today. It's great to be here. So this metal doesn't get a lot of attention. A lot of people may not even know what it's used for but it is a crucial component for steel. So tell us a little about a little bit about manganese. Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, in fact, I would argue you don't really have any adequate substitute for manganese in the steel making process. And one of the big reasons is it allows steel to be made harder. It takes out the oxygen and the sulfur, the two significant impurities, and it also allows you to work the steel at a higher temperature. So, uh, and, and actually prevents corrosion. So in the steel making industry, particularly the higher quality of steel that we're seeing coming out of the world today, manganese is, a, is an essential ingredient. And it's also used in aluminum cans uh, for, to prevent corrosion, and is now gaining a lot of strength in the fertilizer market because it actually helps uh, you know, improve yields and improves the roots of, of various crops. And it seems Brazil, South America particularly, is a key market for this. Let's talk Absolutely. about Can Cano Resources. This is a Calgary-based uh, company listed on the TSX. That's correct. And it's making some big moves in Brazil. Well, that's right. Now, you make a valid point because, it, interestingly enough, most of the high-grade manganese is actually found in the southern hemisphere. Now, I'm not sure why that's the case. Uh, it may have something to do with being tropical weather. But the fact is that the northern hemisphere has low grades. So, uh, Cancana has a high-grade uh, project in Brazil. And the, then there's two big advantages to that. Number one, they're not going to have to concentrate this. So in other words, if you have a grade at 54% like they do, then you can ship that directly to the steel mills. And they also can sell that to the fertilizer companies. As opposed to if I got a 10 or 15% grade, I'm going to have to make a very expensive process to concentrate it to get it up to 50%. And then the second factor is that in Brazil, where they're located, they don't have to worry about costly infrastructure. They can simply truck it to the river and barge it to the steel mills. It's kind of like the old days when we had a big steel industry in North America and they used to ship iron ore along the Great Lakes. So it's cheap, it's efficient. They don't have to worry about shipping it to China or Asia because they've got such a big fertilizer market and such a big steel market already available. Uh, in uh, Brazil. And they are, well now, with all the permits they've now received, I'd say they'd be a near-term producer uh, probably within the next three to six months. So w Brazil, obviously, a huge market, as you pointed out. They have a huge use for steel there, Correct. fertilizer market. Correct. But what about the global demand? What are you looking at, or what are we expecting when we look at the global demand? Well, that's a good question because, uh, you know, uh, we've been on the network pushing iron ore and met coal, which are obviously related to steel. We saw the numbers out of China yesterday were very strong. So we see steel making uh, continually be strong throughout the world over the next three years. And we see the manganese market rising to about 21 and a half million tons by 2015. And so, yeah, we see good demand largely because we see strong growth in steel, but we see rapid growth in the fertilizer market. And, and I should have even mentioned even in the battery market. Okay, very interesting. As you mentioned, uh, the beverage companies, as right. well as batteries, right. as well as steel. So That's three right. uh, main uses for this metal. What is the process, though, in terms of actually mining manganese? Uh, what, what is involved? Well, it's interesting because some mines are under ground mm -hmm. and have the disadvantages of going deep and having to pull the manganese up and then again if you have a low concentrate then you have to send it to a smelter or a refiner to get it up to a 50% level because any price that I would quote the price today is 535 a metric dry ton that's at 50% grade so uh, but in Cancana's case there's a surface so they will merely have to basically open pit it. And because it's such high quality, there will be uh, basically no refining of the product. The product can be shipped kind of as a DSO, direct shipping, uh, to the steel mills and to the fertilizer areas. So they will get at least the price, if not maybe a slight premium to the quoted price. So again, that's the big advantage of having uh, a grade of that size, uh, of, that, of that percentage. Why do you think, given how important this metal is to a very important product like steel that's used in construction and building, why is it that there's such little attention on manganese? Why do you think that is? Well, you know, it's a good question. I think what you have to remember is what do people tend to concentrate on? When they look at Sun TV, you're going to, you'll, you'll know this, they'll, the oil prices there, natural gas, everything that trades on the big exchanges, mm -hmm. NYMEX and the London uh, exchanges, is well known. When you are what is considered a minor metal, 
like a titanium or a manganese. People just don't know about it because, frankly, to get information, to even get the quote, it's not that easy to find. I mean, I found it because I know where to look, having mm -hmm. been in the mining business. But, you know, it, it, so I think people like to follow those commodities that they relate to and that are easy for them to understand and that are out there trading on literally second-by-second -second basis, where this is a contract-based mm -hmm. uh, material. And so I think that's why it's not as widely followed. Plus, there's not that many companies that are really in the manganese business. You know, some of the big guys are involved, but on the small cap side, CanCan -Can is one of the few you're going to find, certainly on the Toronto mm -hmm. market. All right. Well, you may call it a minor metal, but certainly has big implications and big opportunities there, it, it seems, in Brazil. So we're going to have to leave it there for now. But I want to thank you so much, Mark, for joining us today. Well, it was great to be here. Thank you. That is, of course, Mark Lackey, the Executive Vice President of CHF Investor Relations right here in our Toronto studio.